Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. So today is Saturday, which means it is Scary Story Saturdays. So I'm going to be just doing a nail set today and you guys can watch and enjoy the nail set while I read some scary stories. So I'm not doing any new products today. I'm just gonna be using products that I've already used in previous videos and just creating a super cute nail set so make sure you watch till the end to see how this super easy and fun nail set turned out so this is a little bit shorter of a video but i was just kind of rushed with the process because as you guys may know i did upload every day this week i'm trying to be super consistent and i'm really loving doing all of these nail sets i just think it's so much fun but today i was kind of just a little stressed out from being so consistent all week and then realizing that it was scary story saturdays and another thing is i don't know if i'm loving this series i like doing it but i do have troubles finding good scary stories to read that i think will be entertaining or that you guys will like another thing i really don't know if you guys are enjoying this series and I just don't know if I want to keep it or if I want to get rid of it. So by this video, I guess I will kind of see if I want to keep this series or maybe just not do this series or just do it every other Saturday or something like that. So if you do enjoy this series, please make sure you like this video and also comment below if you are enjoying. If you don't like this series and would rather it be a nail tutorial like where I'm talking about the nails instead of just talking or reading please also let me know I want to put out videos that you guys are enjoying and wanting to watch another thing I quickly want to mention just before I get into the scary stories is today Saturday or tomorrow Sunday I will be posting about the giveaway I'm not really gonna have any specific ways on how to enter the giveaway the main things are make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and make sure you're following me on Instagram and just staying active if I'm seeing you comment if I'm seeing you subscribe if I'm if I'm seeing you share if I'm seeing you like my Instagram post, just anything like that, you will definitely have a chance to win the giveaway. And I will be posting more about that over on my Instagram and possibly on my YouTube community tab. So just stay tuned for that. Alrighty, so enough of me blabbing and let's get right into the first scary story. This one is I found on Reddit by No Sleep and the title of this one is My Mom Kept Me Safe With a Text Code, She Just Used It. My mom was my whole world when I was growing up. When I was seven, my father left my mom and me after she found him having an open affair with a co-worker. He beat her up. He beat her up for having the audacity to leave him, but she got the house and scrubbed him out of our lives. She decided she would focus on herself and taking care of other women, so she worked for lots of women's shelters and such. She eventually became a court counselor and a social worker for abused women and children, and she really helped people get out of abusive situations. She understood the world isn't always kind to women. Being the amazing woman she is, she knew growing up as a girl is already hard, so we had safety codes and phrases built in to keep me safe. She also had special rules that if I got in trouble, I could call her or text her in our special way and she would come get me, no questions asked and no consequences. That way, if I was in trouble, I could call her without fear of her reaction or punishment. She told me she understood being a teen means making choices of your own, and sometimes those are really stupid choices, but they shouldn't cost me my innocence. She cared first and foremost for my safety. When I was 11, I went on my first sleepover, and I just wasn't comfortable. I wanted to go home, but I didn't want to hurt my friend's feelings. Our code was two punctuations. If I used two of any punctuations at the end, that meant I needed help or wanted to leave but didn't want the person near me to know. Me, hey mom, exclamation point, exclamation point. 
Mom, hey, your uncle just called and I might need to come get you. Can you tell your friend you have to leave? Me, do I have to? Question mark, question mark. Mom, yes, please pack up. That way, I saved face and could blame my mom. I did use it from time to time, but it was rare. I knew I always had a safety net growing up. Though I was, though I was in a pretty safe area, it was a small town on the outskirts of a college town, and I was advanced for my age, so most of my friends were the kids my mom was always around with the shelters, and they were pretty laid-back kids for the most part. I also hung around the shelters and the women would talk to me like I was grown, which was nice considering I was closer in age to half of them than my mom was. I didn't hang out with any rebellious kids and never really did anything stupid enough to be noted until college. I started college two years early. I realized really quickly how safe my little town was. I was graduating early and only 16, but the college I went to was the one right next to our town, and I could live at home and drive to campus and such. I had gotten drunk a small handful of times, but my friends and I were always safe and didn't drive. My first frat party was a lot. I'd never seen so many drunk people doing such crazy stuff. It was exhilarating, but also really overwhelming. I ended up finding a quiet corner with a few people chilling. I struck up a conversation with a cute guy and he offered to get me a drink. I know, dumb naive girl. I didn't think twice and drank the drink. About 10 minutes later, I started feeling really strange and went to the bathroom. I had my phone in my hand while I heard Mr. Polite knocking on the door, but I could barely see my screen as I texted my mom. Me, I'm at Street Redadact. Can I please stay a little past curfew at question mark question mark? Mom, absolutely not. I'm coming to pick you up right now, young lady. Me, exclamation point, exclamation point. It was all I could see to press in my rapidly blurring state before the guy managed to get the door open and help me out of the bathroom. He checked my phone, saw the messages to my mom with a snide huff, called me a worthless baby, kicked me in the thigh, and left me sitting in the hallway alone. I know for a fact my mom got me out of a horrible situation that night. Part of our code was that if we included an address, it was an emergency. An address meant danger. She had burned that into my memory. Know the address. Write it down. Copy it as a memo on your phone. Anything. So I memorized addresses before I went to parties, and she saved me that night. She didn't get mad I was drinking or somewhere she had warned me against going. She was just worried about me and wanted me to be okay. That night, she took me to the hospital and they put me on saline and something else to help me flush the drug from my system. I just remember mom sitting by my bed looking relieved but still worried. I didn't realize how dangerous that situation could have gotten, but she did. Beyond that, I don't remember ever needing the code. She talked to me and told me the hard truths of being young woman in today's world after I sobered up, and I've been very careful ever since. Last month, my mom passed away from a fatal heart attack. She had always had a weak heart, but she was saving up money to get a pacemaker, but it just didn't happen fast enough. I was completely devastated. I thought of my mom as a per permanent fixture in my life, the rock that was always keeping me grounded and safe. She was immortal in my eyes, and I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to move on with my life without my confidant, my protector. I just didn't know what to do. When I opened the door and she wasn't there, I just cried. Knowing she would never be there again was just so horrible. I texted her phone and it rang on the table. I looked at it and wanted to throw it across the room. But I would never do that, could never do that. She loved that damn phone. She loved being able to have her pictures and her music all together and play her phone games. She would sit and watch short films and funny videos for hours after she would be sleeping. It was her guilty pleasure, that phone. That's when it had struck me. I remembered the funeral director told me I could place items in her casket that were important to her, 
and I decided then and there I would clone her phone on my computer to save all of her data and pictures, and I would give her her phone. I love the idea of her playing her phone games and laughing at videos in the afterlife, the thought that made me smile and took a silver of grief away. I knew it was silly, and I didn't know how long her cell bill was paid up for, but I just couldn't stop thinking about how fitting it would be. She always did joke about coming back to haunt me just to play her games and watch videos, so why not give her something to tie her over until she sorted out how to come back and haunt me? Her funeral was sad but lovely. She was surrounded in her favorite flowers, tiger lilies and birds of paradise. Woman after woman came up to me, told me how much of a difference my mom made in their lives. I thought of all of their lives that she touched and all of the people she helped throughout her life. Despite my grief, I couldn't help but be proud of my mom and proud to be her daughter. Getting home after the wake and more condolences, I finally sat down on mom's couch and turned my ringer on for the first time since I left my funeral. Immediately, I got a mixed a missed text notification. Mom, I love you too, period, period. I stared at my phone. The text I had sent the day the day she died was right there before it, so I knew I was it wasn't a spoofed number. I thought for a minute that this was some prank, but I couldn't figure out who would do something like this. I decided to assume it was a well-meaning friend of my mom's who maybe shared her number. Me, please don't text me from this number. This is my mom's number and she just passed away. I waited. I saw the dot 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 of typing. My heart was in my throat as I waited to get a text back from whoever was using my mom's phone number. Mom, I'm at Redadac location. Can you come visit me? Question mark, question mark. My heart froze in my chest. I hadn't noticed on the first message. I was too freaked out. Two periods. I reread the second message. That's the cemetery's location with two question marks. She had been buried alive. I called the funeral director and begged him to meet me at the plot. Something was wrong. He swore up and down she couldn't be alive. They didn't do an autop They didn't do an autopsy, but she was dead. I just cried and begged and showed him the text until he finally agreed to meet me and help me find out what was going on. I put that phone in my mother's casket myself before they sealed and lowered it down. Nobody has that phone but her. Finally convinced nothing would soothe my panic crying, he called an emergency. The ground was still freshly filled, so getting her dug up was fast and easy. They opened her casket and her phone was in her hand rather than in her purse at the side where I had put it with her. On her screen was an unsent message to me, Mom, under me, period, period. That was the day they found the first body. Teenage girls had been disappearing over years at slightly raised rates for the last six years or so, but mostly were assumed as runaways or ignored. Families had begged for the police to look for their children, but it fell on deaf ears. It turns out the cemetery caretaker would stake out grieving families. He was stalking the girls and would then kidnap them when they were coming home from school he would kill them and bury them under fresh graves before putting putting in the casket and filling them in hiding all evidence of his crimes in plain sight after finding his map and his souvenirs they were able to give closure to 27 families to me the most chilling evidence they found that a detective reluctantly showed me was a collection of pictures of my mom's funeral where my 13 year old niece's picture was circled I know that you guys are going to ask, so I'll tell you. I did get one last text from my mom. It was a week after all the media calmed down and I was able to return to my grief. It's hard to grieve when people are questioning you about everything and calling you a hero. I knew I wasn't, but they just didn't want to listen to my story. They just assumed I saw something before they lowered my mom's casket down. So after I finally got the chance to sit down and be alone, I put one I put on one of my mom's favorite horror movies and I texted her one last time. I didn't expect anything supernatural. I just felt it would give me a little closure. 
Me, I love you, Mom. I miss you so much. I hope you are happy, happy wherever you are now. I set my phone down and wiped away the tears that were flowing freely. This movie was still as good as the first time she showed it to me. I was genuinely startled when my mom's text ringtone went off. Mom, I love you too, honey, and I am. So that was the end of that story, and here are how the nails turned out. I really did enjoy that story. I was actually going to read it last time, but it it's a little bit of a bigger story, and I didn't have enough time. So I'm so glad I got to read it this time, and I'm glad that I actually had a story that I could find and kind of enjoyed. I really did like that one, and honestly, I also really love how these nails turned out. They were super simple and just so fun. I am in love with these Madame Glam gel polishes and I'm just so excited I got to use them again. I am popping in without flash and then here is with flash in a little bit here. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you all next time.